I'm sitting in front of the old Dolphin Farm offices in the old Balboa Inn in, uh, on the Balboa Peninsula where we had um, our studio and I was working on the uh, electromagnetic spectrum poster about uh, communications and I had the Leprechaun Epiphany. It was about 1979 and coincidentally my first collaborateur on the project was Eric Gattegaard and he happened to be staying at the old hotel here and here we are now and I'm going to introduce Eric and ask him to share with us the story of when we first met and why we kind of triggered these thoughts that we had. Well, the way that I see it is that uh, I came from Europe, from the old world. I arrived in the Bay Area, in, uh, in California, San Francisco. The whole region was, as far as I was concerned, what we do call today a disruptive culture. And it seemed that it was like opening new gates toward a future that was to be invented. And with you, uh, I was able to find someone with whom we could have a conversation where culture and technology and uh, representation, visual arts, uh, all of this could actually be, and mass media could be rethought, rearranged, reconfigured, and where we could write a new story of what was already beginning to happen in the early 80s. And so, and, and so you were dropped off at my doorstep with your artwork, and I looked at your artwork and I said, I get where you're coming from, and I showed you my Leprechaun Epiphany story, and we immediately sparked, and ideas started flowing. And what was your first impression, if, if you can remember, of, of that starting point of the notion of the Leprechauns? Where, how did that inspire you, or why did you, that click for you? Well, at the time I was doing a lot of, the, of collages, uh, uh, in which I was staging the um, intervention on the planet of other entities that were um, uh, neo-religious, if you will. And this idea of, this sort of ideal of a new, um, uh, uh, new, new kinds of um, humans appearing on our doorsteps, actually, and. Uh, and, and, and coming with new narratives seemed to relate to what you were talking about with Ile Procon. So it was a short step between these uh, this, uh, pseudo-philosophical ideas or religious ideas and your concept of an entity that came from uh, you know, the, the, the technological realm. And so we tried to figure out what to do with that story and we worked on different art projects. It was before computer graphics and um, it was before networking and it was before email and all that good stuff and we tried to predict what all that would mean and i know prediction is something that's still in your head about how do we deal with that and wh why don't you speak to that a little bit yeah prediction i mean uh, it, I, th I think that uh, the um, the the layer or the the diamond the 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 the, the, uh, the stream of uh, of prediction is in the air always and the signs the signs are already out there and I've always been very interested uh, uh, from studying semiotics in identifying those signals and those signs uh, they they they, they, they the, in, in the in the uh, in these days they were in mass media already they were in music also there was a a momentum to get out of the post um, um, you know the war zone of the 20th centuries of Vietnam War and to try to build a new idealistic world and it was predicated on um, on tools that were creative uh, inherently creative um, and out of the of, of the use of these tools which were at once tools and media um, there was a there was a need to redefine them to uh, to turn them away from the culture of consumption that came out of the 50s in the US uh, toward a culture of uh, creation and I think that with, with uh, the Eli Procon uh, myths and, uh, and this sort of like, uh, and this heritage that I had with me that came from uh, Judeo-Christian, uh, um, you know, uh, uh, culture from Europe, you know, the, 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 whole, the whole culture of uh, cathedrals and uh, all this iconography that is pervasive in Europe, uh, and combining that with mass media and electronic media here in, the, in, um, in California, there was something here that was um, emerging, which was going to be about um, 
a, a, a new form of humanism in a way, in which the language was not going to be predicated on uh, um, monolithic uh, structures like the scrolls or like the Bible or uh, scriptures, you know, that are sort of petrified uh, in the past, but that were be going to be coming from uh, individuals themselves, you know, which in a sense you could say is a, is a precursor to thinking about social media and things like that. And of course, I mean, there is no, we didn't invent that. That really was in the streets of Berkeley in the in the 60s. And, uh, uh, and also the, the, all the happenings, all the culture of um, the music culture that came out of uh, this era was already a form of a social um, uh, uh, monumental uh, social uh, yeah. conversation, if you will, yeah. which was very creative yeah. in fashion, in music, yeah. in, uh, in graphic design. Uh, yeah. and, and so we took that, that notion of the expression and we evolved that into the um, the equation, our metaphysical equation of E equals M C cube, which or actually turned into the infinite symbol, which was evolution equals mind times omnidirectional communication. Yeah, yes, and we tried yes. to integrate that thought into um, this notion of well, we're 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 evolving our mind because we're able to communicate and we're able to share these ideas and express these ideas and spread these ideas. Yeah. Can you speak a little bit to that? Yeah, there was there was there was a time. I, 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 there, uh, uh, th this culture, this huge culture of the '60s, uh, um, was very inspired by their, or, or, or at least conditioned by their education in universities. So you had a lot of highly educated kids out there who uh, uh, studied uh, various uh, areas of science and uh, who uh, grew up uh, being, uh, being uh, say, um, inspired by Botty Fuller, for instance, or the Eames, or uh, Einstein, and what they thought is that these discoveries, these inventions that were kind of not going anywhere other than like building atomic bombs, could be used to invent other um, phenomena that would be world-changing. And, and it's not and, and the culture, popular culture that originally had been very much rooted into agrarian culture, maybe uh, uh, the culture of manufacturing. All of a sudden, instead of coming from the hands, you, you could say it came from the mind, from the soul, from the dream, from beyond our own culture. So instead of referring to what we knew, uh, you know, the, the, the buildings of cities, the building of things, the making of things, uh, the consumption of things, uh, we started to look at relationships that were in, in, another, in other realms altogether. So um, working with uh, uh, the, the myth of Zelie Brokens, for instance, or ideas like that, uh, that do not have any known established references, allowed us uh, to um, invent uh, and write all kinds of new codes and new kinds of relationships and new systems in a way. You know, what's and interesting is that at that time period, if you recall, we had it E equals MC cubed because it was, it was after the two, the three was after the two. Yeah, yeah. And soon thereafter, the military industrial complex co-opted C3 yes, to yes, be C3, a, a yes. command, control, and communication. So we wanted to keep ahead of it and we added the infinite symbol, mm -hmm. and, uh, which gave us an expression of the idea that we can communicate in time in the presence between us like we're doing now. We can communicate in time with history and looking back and looking at the tablets or the tablaos. Yeah. And, and we could express ourselves in the future and communicate with the future by what we're doing now, what will be left for somebody in the future. Can you speak a little bit to that? Yeah, um, well, that, that, now we're getting into just like everything that you uh, referred to here is bringing us into the question of complexity. Because being able to, uh, uh, to, to, to function in multiple dimensions, not just through time and space, but through languages, through culture, through the, um, uh, through the impact of the future that is coming toward us. Okay. And there are some phenomena that are already triggered, that are launched, and let's say climate change, for instance, is one of them. But it's not just climate change that is actually uh, uh, an evolving uh, uh, force. A social change is also happening. And so for us to be able to um, um, maneuver through this um, future that is coming toward us and that we've been sort of fabricating and triggering but somehow it itself has become metabolic we are using um, multiple forms of lang language in a way to communicate through it so that we can actually handle very very complex notions and also the the the, the, the fact that we are do, trying to do it over time and over different modalities you know, it could be visual art, it could be um, text, it could be um, uh, writing systems, equations, uh, narratives. Um, 
architecture, um, legislation is very interesting, I think. It allows us to basically test ideas and reconsider them and rethink them and retest them and evolve them. This is very organic in a way. It's organic and at the same time, it's, um, it's speculative. And that notion, nature doesn't speculate. Humans speculate. Yes. And when we speculate, we're basically making up stuff that is not going to affect anybody as long as we don't build it. We can manifest it in our imagination as long as we don't make it, you know, uh, as long as it doesn't take any footprint in the world, uh, it's okay. You know, there's no um, risk in a sense. You know, there's no real commitment. Only in the failure of ideas. That can be, we'll see later, every, every, every time we do a, a prediction or a forecasting and it doesn't, um, manifest we can see that maybe we were like a little bit misguided in one of this uh, kind of um, aspect of the this multi-dimensional journey in a way right yeah so that's interesting because you know we were trying to predict we were trying to figure out what to do with this new mythos this you know leaving the last fairy tale and moving forward with these ideas and yet we we kind of like got stuck with it but I think for me I know myself that I felt like it wasn't that I was supposed to do something, it was that I had a peek into something that was coming. Yeah. And all I could do was now witness it for a little while. Yeah. And so we kind of put it away. Yeah. Yet, I always, for myself, carried it with me as a model, a way yeah. to relate to what was yeah. going around me. Mm -hmm. and, and whenever we would talk over the years, I would hear you echo that same thing. You would relate to the leprechauns. You would say, I, you know, I was doing this and I think, you know, how, how, how did you carry the leprechaun notion wow. forward? Um, before we met, I was beginning to do uh, explore this idea of this uh, um, sort of uh, iconographic myth because, from my point of view, it was purely iconographic, and my um, realm, if you will, was the realm of uh, the magazine world or television. It was actually completely iconographic. But what happened is that very quickly, I uh, started to uh, to work in the real in the field, you know, in the, in the field of technology, because I was uh, doing, I was working with Adobe systems, doing, uh, working with the new tools, uh, working out new hybrid images. Weren't images. you one of the first designers to really participate in the launch of Wired magazine? Yeah, yeah, no, I was at the very beginning of, uh, of uh, Photoshop, I was at the very beginning of, uh, of Wired. So, in Photoshop, you know, in a sense, you could say that it's a sort of, um, uh, uh, sort of pictorial alchemy, you know, it allows you to to manipulate uh, the surface of representation in any way that you want, uh, if, uh, and and so right there there was the beginning of messing up with representation. When I went to work with uh, uh, Wired soon after, then we started to write the narrative, which was kind of like part uh, of uh, uh, the Leprechaun, uh, Leprechaun narrative, and in this case it was like the magazine that was like the the story. I mean, how we are actually. Um, expressing something that is happening and that we believe is happening beyond the realm of commerce, beyond the realm of industry, beyond the realm of finance. Because before Wired, what happened is that all the, the, the players, if you will, the stakeholders, they were only interested in, for them it was a continuation of uh, the industrial age. And what happened with Wired is that uh, we, ex we, we, we understood, like, like, like you did, early on that this was not, it was way more than the continuation of the industry. It was actually what we ended up calling the, uh, the age of information um, and, and that this was obviously uh, going to, uh, to explode into, um, uh, into maybe what we, we could call like uh, the age of complexity and, uh, you know, and, 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 and pervasive conflicts, which is, you know, which have always happened, but now it's actually um, uh, a stream. You know, it, it's entered into the atmosphere. We are in, atmo in an atmospheric uh, state. We used to be in a very material and concrete and physical environment, and now we are into something that is atmospheric, in which the uh, the, the, the energy is uh, not anymore, you know, defined by uh, how fast your car is going to uh, to move and uh, how many uh, how much land you can cross or you can uh, you can uh, take over. It's actually predicated around how the ideas and the thoughts. Uh, are going to uh, permeate the environment and how they are going to to, to take uh, seed in a way they are going to uh, survive or um, multiply uh, and this this uh, new phenomenon we're still trying to make sense of it I don't think that it's been understood I think that in, in that sense the Eprecon has been um, um, 
like me perhaps in a way has been uh, caught into uh, a campaign or, um, or or a mission you know which was a mission of of, uh, of progress first we would call it progress and then we started to talk about innovation then now we are going in a, in an age of mutation that is like uh, beginning to be uh, um, And unconstrainable in a way. It's, it's basically autonomic. You know, I mean, basically easily broken with artificial intelligence. God knows where the soul is. You know, in, we thought the Eliprocon came with a soul that was uh, perhaps expressed with, uh, by Thénard de Chardin. You know, we did that uh, Neosphere project. In the Neosphere, there was an inherent expectation that uh, the human soul was going to be vested and was going to be there as a sort of a guiding light. But today, what we thought was going to be a guiding, a guiding light, which came from the human, the inventors, the creators, and the Leprechaun coming from some other uh, fantasy or dream or myth, today is actually the, the light of the screen. You know, the signals have become purely um, electronic, in a sense, or... Um, the pure energy in a sense uh, you know and there is this also this is the blurring uh, uh, with different forces like um, not just industry innovation technology but also economics and um, economy you know which is actually yes. driven and 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 is digital now really yeah and, yeah, yeah. and it's it's it's, it's very it. ephemeral yeah, it's and ephemeral, we yeah. only e exist in this kind of manifestation of it but um, and we're not sure if it's true we we're not sure if it's a if it's if it's a something that's real and yet we are being manipulated by it yeah it, it is it is uh, interestingly it's always uh, uh, okay pre i was born in in the in the in the in the catholic myth in a sense so so it structured the cities that i lived in it structured my youth how i was brought up uh, today i mean we can't ignore the fact that this um, um Construct, you know, which is um, which is um, um, this artificial construct, uh, um, this um, order, if you will, of uh, of of, uh, of the forces that allow us to stick together in a way, social orders, um, you know, and economic orders, political orders, uh, uh, um, legislative orders, and so on and so forth. Uh, they are not held. They are not centralized. They are completely um, distributed. They are beyond the networks. I, you know, I, I don't think that the, we used to think that the structure of our lives was basically the structures of cities. Before there was the structures of states. Then we have now we have the, the networks. And today, I think we are beyond the age of networks. And so, when we talk about prediction and, and, and the context of the leprechauns and uh, the metaphysical equation and. What, where does that lead to? What do you, where do you see this going? What is your predict, prediction of um, what's happening with the leprechaun conspiracy? Is well, it I, being co-opted? It's being co-opted a long time ago. Long time ago. So if we want to, uh, to, to address this uh, question, we have to do what we did. Um, not far from here, nearly 30 years ago, so, sorry, 35 you know, years ago, approximately, sorry. and uh, what we need to do is uh, close up a little bit uh, and uh, and basically engage into uh, a, a new research, perhaps, uh, and evaluate what has happened, re reorganize our thoughts, uh, um, clear up a little bit all the noise, you know, and all the concerns, you know, that are sort of um, you know confusing us, and we have to basically <coughs> rewrite. You know the next phase. What happens to the program? Um, what are the other forces that we have not identified that came in the meantime? Because I have to say that I worked at uh, at Wired uh, with a bunch of illuminaries and like illuminate people and like young people and older people and dreamers and um, some uh, of the activists from the six. What happened to this um, organization, if you will, to this, to this, uh, to this, to this? Uh, um, community is that it was entirely eradicated it was taken over it was basically bought out or it was thrown out you know of the of this uh, lab that we had invented collectively and it doesn't belong to us anymore other people came in so the question after that is to ask ourselves we have continued with that 
you know, early myth, if you will. Most of us have, but other players have come in into this territory, which was a, a kind of a, a technological culture and a mythology, if you will, and they have appropriated it. Yeah. And they have built an economy around it. They have built a, a commerce, have commercialized it. If you will, the question that we have to ask ourselves is: Is Ilipricon inherently um, uh, uh, rooted into the, the, you know, the practice of capitalism, for instance, or is it something that is coming from beyond this this this, this concept? You know, that I'm not really sure where it begins. If it begins uh, with Marx, or if it begins in uh, in the, uh, with the revolution of the early uh, 19th century or if you came from the Romans um, and so we this is a much more uh, dif it's much more difficult I believe to explore the ch the challenges of uh, human uh, communication than it is to figure out our, our relationship with technology I think it's relatively easy to understand how we relate to artificial intelligence to robotics for instance uh, or even to complexity but to actually explore the nature of relationship between people today and I'm talking about people around the world or even here in one in, in, in a town um, I find it to be the challenge of our times I think that in a way if anything the Procon came in to help us to invent new models of, of um, um, scripting this relationship between humans but we're basically right now, after all of this um, evolution and all this progress and all these innovations, I believe somehow we're going, I don't know if it's like a, a full circle and we're going back to, to, toward the origin, toward the fire, toward, the, you know, Burning Man is not just like coming out of uh, nowhere in a way, you know. The idea of uh, uh, Burning Man is, is, is raising the question of whether, what can we learn if we backpedal before all these innovation, all these electronic innovations, uh, and go back to the elemental, rediscover you know. the soul. Well, rediscover just also, but also the fire. The fire is both destruction, and 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 and, uh, and the ability to basically build, rebuild, you know, civilization yes. in a sense. So, and of course, you don't just do it by going back to the caves, but you can also do it, for instance, which I'm seeing around by like like buying old technologies by trying to see how far you can backpedal you know do you backpedal one decade two decades three decades and, and uh, you know we see more and more of that um, exploration about uh, what happened before the early broken showed up at the at this at this idea of the of the of, the, of this track of these crossroads and suddenly there is the lights are changing we begin to understand that these lights are green yellow red are actually codes you know, this is the language of the Leoprocon, in a sense. One of the signals that was already in there. And we start to understand, oh, this is a code. This is actually some entity trying to say something to us. You know, slow down, stop, go, slow down, stop, go. You know, and it's like, you know, predictable um, cycle, like a mantra, like a nearly, it's not a meditation because it's actually not allowing you to meditate in a sense it's asking you for full attention you know and uh, and there's something about where did i come from before i saw that first traffic light and trying to understand how did i what happened before the traffic light showed up and of course there's many kinds of different forms of traffic lights and signals yes. yeah signals and, and and of course at the same time we we are considering that uh, possibility to backpedal but most of us are also going full force forward and trying to remain uh, lucid about what's going on not forgetting what we've seen what we discovered and making sure that we do not get vested in the economy of the traffic lights you know and just leave it at what it can possibly be um, and there's a voice a voice coming from outer space or wherever or maybe just um, you know the the new regime of the city you know to um, accelerate traffic to control traffic uh, um, and to build uh, to build the future and and all of this is predicated on the idea of ideas and that we can communicate about ideas and it's essentially it's been a never-ending idea 
that has been evolving and taking from one generation to the other and seeding the next mind for us to move forward. And, and you've invited me essentially to continue the dialogue with you and to pursue this never ending idea. And um, I thank you for that. I appreciate that because I love working with you and it's always great fun when we get together and uh, bounce the ideas around. Let's go have some lunch and continue the dialogue. Ditto. All right. Man. Yeah. Thank you. See you. Yeah. Bye bye.